just wandering down to Dancroft Cottage again. Um, Steve and Judith have got some students down, I think, sort of testing the river, seeing how the ecology wildlife's doing. Uh, probably some scientific tests on the water and the river rat. So, be nice to come down and feel a bit of that, sort of see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and we're raising awareness about local heritage and um, we're just busy developing a website for Sto Stories which is all about nurturing people, land and the natural world, protecting, restoring, conserving but with a lot of interesting intriguing stories along the way. Oh thanks John, okay. welcome. all the videos yesterday on the like page. Oh, you had a yeah, yeah, yeah. They are there for them to. Oh, have good. Yeah. What we're going to do is um, split you into two. Uh, Dan will, in a minute, probably demonstrate an EA sampling technique for rivers, are you? Yeah. So for that and what you, they, they do routinely as they're biomonitoring. And then half of you can get in and start taking samples. Um, but I hear you have American signal grades that should be. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I we filmed one, didn't we, Tom? Briefly, we yes. Got one. It, well, it was big yeah, and black. Yeah, large. I don't know if you noticed two white spots on either cloth. Possibly, we'll, yeah. I We've think got we'll, a bit of video somewhere of it. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll find some today. Um, and look, I don't think it'll be the native. They require yeah. almost pristine conditions. Um, but we have, yeah. when Steve and I first came here, we did find we were sure it was native crayfish in the river, but yeah. that was. 20 odd years ago. Yeah. You never know. So a native crayfish will be a real find because it will be well, a highly If you find a native crayfish, what is it? A gin, double gin and tonic. When we went. My old teacher, who, who you know, used to tell me uh, always there was a reward for a protected species. So <laughs> if we find something today, particularly a crayfish, let's get it out, put it in the tray, and we can go over the IDs quite carefully. Ow. The, the basic principle, if you've seen it, is you would cast the net with the stream running through the net materials in a downstream direction and you would just literally gently kick as you go. Three minutes after that you will have enough systematically in your net. I and the other residents decided we needed to have an awareness raising campaign. That's when the Rattleston River Valley Network and Store Stories began with a view for the Rattleston River Valley Network really to be linking up and that's about, initially that's about collecting data and evidence to find out what was here, mm. hence the moth fests and linking up with Jenny at the museum and our neighbours here in order to um, identify those invasive species like Himalayan balsam which we keep going on because unless you do that collectively as river owners then you, you, it's, you, it's a losing battle isn't it? So I just got in contact with the museum and found there was a brand new conservation course yeah. and got in touch with Nick so from from all that time ago, two years ago, we've been trying to sort of plan this yeah and plan, they, they were busy planning their first students. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon this section could be oh, our song. Song. Yeah, yeah, if that's all right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If we, we, we could stand on the edge, just yeah. a bit of a base where we feel a bit safer. I reckon, given the size of what we got, 
maybe two people sample at the same time. And, uh, you see, and, and how are they going to find anything in all that silt? I think, well, there's, they can't, well, we might find there's nothing there, but Dan, who's a real expert in this, he did a study on the River Thames, I can't remember the details, but real phenomenal study. He said, he, and I thought in a flood, you know, we have huge floods that go above these banks, then everything would be washed away anyway. But he says not all these little living organisms just sit in the stay in the silt or stay in the gravel and they don't get washed away the miracle really <laughs> told I'm not allowed, which is typically what happens when we have these experiments. There's two ways of doing it, because it's for hard and for really hard. And so we've put two in, two. up to yeah. two, and then we're down to 0 0.7. Yeah, so, so 2.3 times. So we've, we've put in, yeah, we've put in one point. We've put in one point. Three dozen millimetres of crate Is it uh, one of our three fish? Yeah, no, it's an it American, American one. It's a horrible American one, but it's uh, crayfish on the You're mic. not welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> My expertise is largely freshwater ecology, including invertebrates, plant life, um, to some degree algae on the bed. What we do is we use them to indicate water chemistry quality in the river. You can take a chemistry probe anytime you want, dip it into the stream, but if you're not there at the moment the pollution occurs, you don't catch the pollution. What the biology does, you know it lives there, it's pretty sessile, it stays in one place, and what's living there and what isn't can determine what impacts are coming into the stream. You know, our scientific understanding of their preferences, what they can deal with in terms of oxygen, what they can deal with in terms of other pollutants, they can get really specific, from metals right the way to organics coming from sewage overflows. You can play detective a bit to know what's going on in the river. Um, and that's the game really, that's what I do. And you travel around doing this? Yeah, throughout oh, Norfolk, Suffolk, Suffolk and East Ang and, uh, and Essex as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for the agency. Um, so it's, it's brilliant, I love it. Well, this tray was one of the first taken, so it's pretty sparse, but we have some common shrimp. Um, we have midge larvae, sort of flailing around. We have a few of these water hoglouse in the other trays we have. I think there's some good stuff to talk about. Again, 
we found these bullhead. You know, you know these fish going through here. Anglers would call them miller's thumb. Um, biodiversity action plan species. As I said earlier, they're really common in the UK, but these protections are put on on a sort of European continental scale, and they're really rare in France and Germany and the like. So it's just a bit of a quirk that they're protected over here. But what else we've got away from the fish we want to be solving for invertebrates is um, is your mayfly types here. If you come close, you can look. You can see that really typical three tails coming out the back. Right? Yeah. Um, mm. Quite often that would be that would mean okay, we've got mayflies here. And immediately, if you see something like that, you can start thinking about its biology. Okay. Well, this is a relatively uh, large um, adult larvae. You could describe it as not. <laughs> sorry, it's not really an adult, but it's it's been here perhaps one year, perhaps two years. And you know its preferences. We know from the science that was, and the testing that's gone on over the years what they prefer in terms of oxygenation of the water, in terms of habitat types, in, and what they can handle in terms of disturbance on the bed, in terms of pollution coming in from outside sources. For many of these invertebrates, that's what we're looking at. You know, their, their sensitivity to that sort of uh, that sort of effect. One thing, you know, we can see we've got our mayflies here as well. But there are a few little things in my head that are of interest. The animals supporting them, there's some leeches in here, which you can see. There's, um, a, big there's, there's a big one going through there. That's that's really interesting bit of diversity. Just saw it there. Yeah. So, so they're not necessarily the parasitic leech types. These would be predatory in the stream, so they'd be swimming around eating other things. You can see it stretching out there just like that. Um, that's interesting. But on the other end of the spectrum, you have, you have, a, you have things like a case caddies. I'll, I'll just, shall I put him in the cleaner tray? I'm, I'm really sorry to move this around, but this, this animal, um, you could think of it in a sense as something more like a moth um, than anything else. So this at its larval stage will be like this for one to two years over its lifespan. Um, and it just lives on the bottom, eating, slowly growing its body reserves, getting ready for adulthood, which might only last a month or two in the summer after that second year. Now, these animals having that amount of time, relatively slow moving and a really good food source for things like fish, they need defenses and protections. And what this has done it has carved off pieces of vegetation it's found in the stream, bits of leaf, secreting it with the resin that it produces in its own body, and then forming this protective case around itself. Um, buttressed, in this case, with these two, two, two long sticks. Gives it camouflage, it gives it protection, um, and it makes it a heck of a lot more difficult for it to be consumed. It looks a bit like a hermit crab, similar sorts of principles of, of biological defence there against predation. It's really so, so it's always really interesting. Um, and it's sucking in absolutely everything in the tank. So it's a, it's a good indication on the Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up on YouTube and do consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button and the little bell icon will get you notifications of new videos. And let's walk together soon. Mm -hmm.